a shower. And like, she and I were drinking tequila in bed that night. Like, I mean, <laughs> the little bottle of tequila, we, we, yeah, we did our thing. Like, it was. Sounds about right, flat Yeah, Sharon. exactly. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome to Well Shit. It really is that simple. I'm Claire. And I'm Serena. On this podcast, we help you to understand about your 12 universal needs, why they are currently not being well met, how to meet them in ways that work for you, and how to consistently do so in quick, easy, and simple ways that fit seamlessly into your life. We'll also help you to understand how doing so will have a positive ripple effect in literally every area of your life. If you like what you hear, please support us on Patreon. And enjoy the show. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everyone. <laughs> we are having a fun start today. Oh, it's a fun, it's a, it's a fun start every day. I mean, and actually it is. If, I it mean, normally is, I think yeah. it was the last, I'm not sure if we mentioned it in the episode or if it's just a tangent I went on before the actual episode, but I was like, we could make a reel of just oh. all the false starts that I've had. Yeah, I don't think it was the last episode, but I mean, the, the, yeah, the amount of times I'm like, ready? Yes. Uh, <laughs> let me let me say 15 other things before we start <laughs> yeah okay well I'll, I'll give you the checking the audio recording given our propensity to um Ooh, not that's a big fancy word for like my fancy propensity. word <laughs> propensity She's a, I, lo- I love the fact that we're talking about a big fancy word like propensity while I'm like sitting in front of Santa's washing line with his underpants his on undies, it like, his undies are right in the middle they are like, they're right, right. Oh, there. there. <laughs> if you are not on uh, YouTube or the uh, the hey. podcast, uh, go check it out. Yeah, <laughs> you have no clue right now. <laughs> it looks good though. Well, and it it kind of works well with the, like the little mini stockings underneath because it's like they they pair up nicely. I think. <laughs> got lots of miniature clothing <laughs> as my christmas decorations they really do they fit the miniature gnomes that nobody yes, can see nobody can the see they're like they're like behind here you can just about see like the christmas tree behind me like over my shoulder well this is what you're in for today <laughs> we're winging it um we do have a solid episode but we have two bullet points so yeah we're in two things we're saying about it so it's <laughs> Like, I, I was about, I was gonna say it'll be a really short episode i bet it won't be every <laughs> every Every fucking time we say, we're like, oh, this will be a quick one. This will be a quick one. It's like, well, how do we take the three hours that we just <laughs> recorded and distill into 30 <laughs> minutes? So uh, today we are talking about something that I think is actually quite dear to both of our hearts. Mm-hmm. It's something that we've both been through. I know certainly for me it, it has been, which is about learning to receive. Um, and there are a number of different reasons why we're not very good at receiving. Um, one of the big ones is there's a lot of cultural conditioning around it being better to give than to receive. It's better to be selfless than selfish. It's mm. better to be self first. Ding, ding, ding. See, um, we're already off. We're already off kilter. We're already off track. Uh, <laughs> tangents abound. <laughs> Were we ever on kilter? Like oh, what does on not. kilter mean? <laughs> I don't know because we've never been there. It doesn't sound fun. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, a lot of the conditioning is that that we should be receiving. That it is, uh, sorry, we should be receiving. We should be giving. Like um, it's like um, there's a the, the, there are so many quotes about this, and I it's can't think of to a give single. Than to receive. Yeah, that was one of them. I just said that one. I was like, there are so many. <laughs> What did you actually? Yes, say? I literally said that like a minute ago. Maybe. Hi, Serena. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> well, shit. Apparently, it's not that simple today. Uh, um, but there are is, lots. This of... is why I don't drink tea in the morning, and I <laughs> drink, drink coffee. coffee. <laughs> this is what happens when she drinks tea? I walked in with a chai today, and I was like, "Oh, I'm switching it up a little bit." Mm-hmm. Not the day. Not the day to switch it apparently up. Apparently not. But there, but there are lots of quotes, and I can't think of any of them right now, uh, other than that it's better to give than to receive. <laughs> But there are lots of these like kind of messages that we get that it's like we we get more from giving than we um, do from receiving, and that that is the um, thing. And, and I think that a lot of the time also because so many of our, need, our needs are wrapped up in our personal relationships, 
um, like and and also with our extended relationships. But I think that because so many of us are dependent, I mean, we've talked about, and I can't remember off the top of my head what episode we talked about this in. I know it wasn't that long ago where we talked about the fact that when you first arrive on the planet, you've got no ability to meet any of your own needs as a baby. So we. Um, most of us have caregivers who are attempting to meet most of our needs but that's more of our physical needs but from our emotional standpoint we um we we learn very quickly that when something isn't right the alarm system goes off the baby starts crying and somebody comes and tries to do something and what we end up doing is we end up being dependent and, and as children it is right for us to be dependent on our adults and our caregivers to get our needs met. But we never get taught the transition out of that. We never get taught to transition from that point to be responsible for and able, and most people don't know that it's possible for us to meet our own needs, but actually taught how to meet our own needs. And so what ends up happening is that as adults, because we are very dependent on the relationships around us to get our needs met, a lot of the time we're, we're constantly trying to think of ways of like keeping these people around <laughs> and this idea of like giving rather than receiving being all oh, like the more I give the more people will want to be around me and the subtext under that the nuance the layers and the subconscious under that is like oh awesome needs are still going to get met um consciously we're not aware of this fact but we get into this pattern of being being generous with others in order to create more of these relationships or to keep the relationships that we have because the relationships that we have are the ways in which we're getting a lot of our needs met um when then you add that to the fact and the, i'll come i'll loop back to this in a second but when you add that to the fact that most of us have incredibly low self-worth our value need often is through the floor um, because we live in a society and in a culture where we're continually conditioned into believing that we're we're not good enough um like you look at the marketing and the messages the implication is that we're um the things in the media in the tv and movies and magazines magazines do they not read magazines anymore um but social media like <laughs> and they still have them at checkout counters but i haven't seen anybody grab one for no a for, for a while. while but like social media like when you think about it like the 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 implication is that we're not thin enough we're not sexy enough we're not successful enough we're not enough of a domestic goddess we're not enough to uh we're not a good enough partner friend sister daughter all the things we constantly have this having this reinforced message that we're not enough which is adding to this feeling of having low self-worth and the thing with the low self-worth is twofold. Coming back to what I was saying about the relationships thing is that a lot of the time, we don't believe that we are worthy of relationships. We certainly don't believe that we're worthy of good relationships. And so we don't trust if we're not spending all of our time giving to everybody else that these people will just hang around because the low self-worth has us believing that if there wasn't a reason, we weren't giving them a reason to stay, that these people wouldn't want to have anything to do with us because we're not worthy of that attention and, and love. Um, and then the, the flip side of it, or the other side, the other element to it is that because we have low self-worth, our value need is so low, we don't believe we are worthy of receiving. So when, when people are trying to be generous towards us, a lot of the time we actually push it away. We actually will um, will reject it in some way, shape or form. And there are, there are subtle ways of doing it. <laughs> Most of the time we don't just go, no. Um, I mean, well, some of some, us might. <laughs> you point to me. <laughs> I mean, it has become your thing now. I mean, you've definitely taken on the no. no. Um, so, am I wrong? No. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> but I think that it, it is a lot of that. Um, like a lot of the time it's, it's not done in that just kind of no format. Mm -hmm. But we find ways of like bypassing it. We find ways of getting around it. Like one of the most obvious ways that this shows up is compliments. Like how often? <laughs> yes. <laughs> go, go, say, say more. Say more. Uh, well, it's it, like we said. There, that that is not one of the two bullet points, and it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. I mean, it it took a while for me to get to a point where I'm like, fuck yeah, I deserve that compliment. Yeah. Like I am, I am worthy enough of receiving the fact that I look great tonight. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> like, and but before I'd be like. 
Oh, no, no, they're just saying that to be... I would think of all the reasons why I wasn't worthy enough to accept that compliment. Like, right, and that that's the thing that goes on in our head. The thing that tends to come out of our mouth is a variation of, like, defensive strategies to, to, to keep the compliment at bay. So it's like... Like it's a, like a, one of the other, oh you too like we don't receive it it's sort of like ding like it comes off the shield like ping straight back to you kind of thing um, or it's like oh no this old thing like oh no no or, or it's like oh god I haven't had my hair done or I'm not wearing any makeup like there's there's a self um, deprecation that happens in that process I'm like oh the fancy words today I'm liking all the fancy things it's like a th- thesaurus thesaurus um. <laughs> I swallowed one earlier. No, I'm joking. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I told you we're going to have fun today. Um, But a lot of the times we find these ways of like, rather than accepting the compliment, we actually invalidate it. We find a way of cutting the compliment down. So rather than saying, uh, saying, oh, yes, I got this from so-and-so or, 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 uh, or thank you. Like, I, like, uh, I, I appreciate that. What we tend to do is said, oh, like, oh God, no, I'm like, I look tired today or like, oh goodness, this whole thing, like I haven't worn this in years. I'd like, or I'm like, I'm carrying a few extra pounds right now. Like we, we just, we got, we cut it down. We cut the compliment down before it has chance to land with us. Um, or we ignore it. Like we just pretend that we haven't heard it. Like, like, oh, how are you? Like, we like it's like, d- hold on. There was a there was a, there was a sentence in there that got missed. Like, like where where did it go? Like somebody like did someone drop it? Like, is it hiding somewhere? It's like, oh, you look great tonight. Oh, how are you? Like, like it's almost like nothing ever happened. And a lot of these are these um, these things that we do because we're not comfortable receiving the compliment because we don't believe that we are worthy of it because we have been taught to look for the things that aren't great in the mirror. We're taught to look for the things that should be better, quote, big air quotes around the should be better. We're looking for the um, the ways our kind of stomach looks a little bit bigger than we'd like it to, or that we've got a few extra wrinkles on our neck than we would prefer, or um, like our hair's doing a weird thing that we'd really prefer it wasn't. Um, and so often we're so focused on that, when we see ourselves, those are the things that we see. Our attention is laser focused on the things that don't follow these unbelievably horrific eurocentric and unconstructive visions of beauty that are being perpetuated in the media so it's like if we don't look like and the reality is even if we do like the people look like the people who would be in magazines if we were still buying them or the people who are on social media i mean and those people don't look like that like filters photoshop all that shit like that's not even a real thing but even if we do like like that we're still looking for the things that i remember having a conversation with a, a girlfriend of mine a couple of years ago and she's somebody who has she's always been stunning um and she's always been treated as stunning um she was uh, i was <laughs> Uh, She was known as my pretty friend when I grew up um, from my darling grandmother. Um, I'm not sure quite what the subtext of that (laughs) as opposed to was. Um, But she's been she's she's a beautiful woman and always has been. Um, And she was somebody who she has an ideal. She had an ideal weight in her head and she was like aiming for that weight. And she's somebody who she like she's done like. Uh, bodybuilding competitions like in terms of like the bikini model stuff so like she's had an amazing like she's she's had a lot of these quote unquote idealized idealized figures at times um and she was saying that she had an ideal weight in her head and then because she went through a period of extreme stress she ended up losing enough weight that she hit that quote unquote ideal weight and she said i looked awful like i looked emaciated i did not look good in any way shape or form I looked ill but it did nothing to change that number in her head because she'd been conditioned into believing that she should look thinner I mean the fact that we are conditioned into looking believing that we're meant to look a certain way and that certain way is un is like sick Mm -hmm. is there's something really fucked up and wrong with the world but because we have this idea of this image that we're meant to look like when somebody compliments us physically, um, and I mean, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna go out there and say, 
don't compliment people physically. Compliment pe- pe- who people are rather than what they look like. Because even if you think that, like, oh, you've lost weight, that's not a compliment. That just reinforces fat phobia. Like, if, like, oh, like, you look, da, da, da. like, it makes it about our physical appearance. And we're so much more than our physical appearance. But if somebody does compliment our physical appearance, we don't believe it because we're focused on the things that aren't the way that we would like them to be. And if we get complimented as who we are as a person, the same thing can happen with those compliments. It's like, oh, like, oh, like, oh my God, you did such an amazing job with this fundraiser. Oh God, I wish I'd done more. Like I, I wanted to do this and this and this and this. Like you could hear it. Like how many times have we heard situations like this where people like, as I said, it's almost, almost like they've got this like compliment shield and it's like ding, 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 ding. Like they ping off in different directions. They try to talk themselves out of the compliment. Yeah. Like- absolutely it's almost like they're saying in that moment i'm not worthy to receive this Mm -hmm. (laughs) let me tell you why i'm not worthy Mm -hmm. to receive it or let me just pretend it didn't happen or let me fire back a compliment to you without it actually penetrating my being like i'm not going to receive it i'm just going to ping it straight back to you which in in that situation like i feel most times and when value needs are at play some people take that ping back and they're like no, 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 I'm going to eat that all up because, you know, I'm meeting my value needed red spectrum ways. Mm-hmm. However, I know a lot of times if I get that ping back at this point in my journey, I'm like, well, I don't feel like that was a conflict. Like that was just a call and response type of yes. thing. So it actually back- doesn't feel genuine. It, it doesn't feel genuine. Yeah. And it almost backfires to what they were trying to do. And it was it's it's an interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the reality is, is that at that point, someone is trying to give you something that they think is nice. They, 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 I mean, and again, intention over impact. Mm-hmm. There are some things that are intended to be compliments, as I said, that are not. Mm-hmm. That's something different to what we're talking about now. I'm talking about if someone's saying, oh, you're such a lovely person. Like, I really appreciate you. Like, those sorts of things that are about who you are as a human being and somebody appreciating that about you. If we don't allow that in, a lot of the time it's because we don't feel worthy of that because we don't see ourselves that way. We see ourselves as not good enough. We see ourselves as we should be doing more. We should be being more and all that sort of thing. And so this combination of uh, of like being like dependent on the people around us to try to get our needs met. So wanting to focus all of our attention on like give, 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 give to them so that they hang around. And the fact that we don't believe that we are worthy, we don't feel worthy because our value need is so chronically compromised. And I will say that as somebody who has done this work for many, many years now, and I've worked with a lot of clients literally from all over the world. I mean, we're talking Australia, Japan, uh, Kuwait, um, Abu Dhabi, all across Europe, people from the US. I've worked with a lot of people from a lot of different places. And I will say that there are three needs which are chronically compromised in the majority of people I work with. There are some that people have for different reasons that other things come up. But there are three which are consistently chronically compromised pretty much universally. And one of those is the value need. Doesn't matter who I'm speaking to. And the interesting thing is, is that people will like look at someone and go, oh my goodness, they're so confident uh, or they're really arrogant or what have you. And a lot of the times actually what's happening is that 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 deep uh, sense of insecurity and unworthiness is coming out in a performance to try to prove that they are worthy. That is every bit as much an unmet value need as somebody who will reject um, compliments that, that, that come their way. Um, and I actually had a conversation with uh, somebody many, many months ago about performers. Um, and you tend to find that performers fit into one of two categories. Because a lot of people, um, as somebody who wanted to go and be a performer, a lot of people go into performance because they want the adoration from other people and the compliments from other people to try to shore up unmet needs. Speaking from personal experience and working for many, many, many years with many, many, many clients. Um, That's a very common pattern. What I said was that performers are often like two sides of the coin. Either you people who are all ego, all like me, 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 look at me. It's all about me. Give me compliments. Tell me how amazing I am. I'm going to tell you how amazing I am, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) I'm going to be the center of attention. Yeah. Nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, that, we live in a performance-based uh, town, yes. so you get to see uh, both sides of this. You coin, definitely see both sides of this point, and that is the, that is a sign of somebody who has a chronically unmet value need. They do not believe that they are worthy, so they're constantly trying to prove that they are worthy or trying to get other people to, to elicit comments from other people that are saying, "Oh, I'm worthy." Like, how great am I, and everything? Or to even, I mean, I'm going to kind of jump in on this one. If Go somebody ahead. is being like cocky, or I'm just going to like being an asshole like arrogant. or arrogant thank you that's the word i'm like yeah don't say dick don't say dick <laughs> um <laughs> i mean the words are often synonymous uh, in our society but arrogance is what you're getting yeah at. arrogance is what i would, yeah that's what i'm getting at is like when there is somebody that has that kind of air to them chances are their value need is compromised more than you could even yeah. imagine it's those confident that that like but there's a difference between confidence and arrogance and i think that confidence genuine confidence comes from having a well met value need like you know your confidence you know you know your confidence <sighs> i mean you do but you know your value and your you're confident you own your value. And it is when you own your value, there's no need to talk about it. There's no need mm-hmm. to shout about it. There's no need to try and get other people to see it because you don't need that. You 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 feel it, you live it, you are it. Those people that are performing to try to get attention, those people who are trying to tell you how amazing they are, those who are, who are trying to perform the act of like, I'm so much better than everybody else. Um, we've all met them. Um, that deep-seated insecurity, deep-seated lack of self-worth, lack of value need. The interesting thing is you end up with the performers the other side of the coin who also have a really severe lack of their need being met um, and they don't feel good enough. And what they do is when the compliments come their way is that they reject them and they push them away and they or they minimize them and they're like oh yeah no 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 or they're like oh no no he's better like all of that it's all deflections because they don't feel worthy of receiving it and the interesting thing is the person who's trying to get all this stuff you can never get enough attention or compliments or comments from somebody else to make up for your lack of self-worth. Mm-hmm. Because the reality is, no matter how good somebody else says you are, if you believe you're not, nothing is going to connect those dots until you start to cultivate that for yourself. So one of the most important things in learning to receive is to start to cultivate your value need. It is starting to take care and nourish your value need because the reason that we we tend to not receive is because we don't believe we're worthy. Once we know that we are worthy of receiving, there's nothing to block it. And it, even to the point where, I mean, and when you are someone who had your value need is well met, you also want to be generous to other people mm-hmm. as well. But there's a way of doing it. There's a distinction here, which is that, If you are somebody who believes that you are worthy of receiving compliments, of whatever it is that is being generously given to you, is that you allow yourself to receive it and then you want to give something without the two being connected because otherwise it starts to feel like a tit for tat. Mm-hmm. Like I'm saying this to you and you're you're saying the same thing to me. Like it's a, it's a trading thing where it's like, I'm doing this for you and you're going to do it for me in return. What I do, like, for example, if someone says to me, um, I don't know, you're amazing, you're kind, whatever it is, um, I'll often say, like, if it's been done over text or something, I'll be saying, I'll say, thank you for your kind words. They're being received with an open heart. And then as a separate thing, or I'll, at the end of the, at the end of the sentence, it'll be the, uh, they're being received with an open heart and returned to you in abundance. So it's like, I'm receiving it in and I also want to return it to you. It's even better if you create a distinction and it's like, this is me receiving it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And this is what I would like to give to you. Not because you've given this to me, because I'm already enough. I want to share that with other people. I have, I have plenty to share because of the energy and the feeling that you have inside of yourself when your value need is well met like you naturally want to share that with others, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it actually makes you, when you learn, when you cultivate your value need and you learn how to receive, you actually end up giving more, I think. Mm. Like just kind of naturally. It's it's what naturally progresses. Well, and also it's like, it's not, um, it, it's like you're, I think a lot of the time it, there's this, the, the, this ends up kind of, 
tying in with the personal power need as well, especially when we talk about these different dynamics, because a lot of the time people are people will say things to somebody else to get them to say it back. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm going to say this to you. So you will say it to me. So I get to feel good about myself. And a lot of the time that what's happening with this is like there's this illusion that there's only a certain amount of power in the world. And it's like, well, I give it to you and then you give it to me. We're, like, we're trading with this like little thing. Well, the reality is, is that when you are meeting your value need for yourself, when you are meeting your personal power need, you're plugging into the mains. So the way I describe it with um, um, with needs a lot of the time, I've, I know I've used this analogy before, is like if you're walking in the desert and you're dehydrated and you've got this like, there's someone comes along with a small cup of water and be like, hey... I'll give you some water if you do this for me. Uh, and you'll be like, yes, yes, I'll do anything. You imagine you're plugged into the mains and someone comes along with a thimble full of water and be like, hey, I could give you this thimble full of water if you do this for me. And we're like, uh, do you need some water? Like, I've got plenty. Like, I don't need yours, but it seems like you might need some because you're kind of trading with it. Like, like I've got plenty here. Oh, they, they. And it's the, this kind of natural generosity that comes. And the reality is, is that a lot of the time, the value need a lot of the time is is often seen in relation to other people. It's like I'm valuable in relation to other people. And a lot of people don't um, don't actually give compliments because they believe by paying somebody else a compliment that they're kind of like, to say demoting themselves that's not the word I'm looking for but they're 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 declining in the, the in their own value because mm -hmm. they're putting this other person the reality is there's, there's no comparison like if your your value need is met you can give to somebody else and it makes no difference to how you feel about yourself you can receive from somebody else and it doesn't change how you feel about yourself you just create this beautiful connection with another person it's like I don't need anyone to tell me I'm I'm kind or great at what I do like I know that if someone tells me that I appreciate that they're acknowledging me and I will thank them for that and I'll receive that but I don't there's no um there's no resistance to it because the value need isn't blocking it um, and I think that, I mean, and we've, we've both been in, um, this situation when it comes to not just compliments, but other kinds of receiving mm -hmm. as well. I'm going to share about some of the experiences that you've had with this. Um, one place I think that most people can resonate with is when other people pay for dinners or drinks and that kind of like that social, mm -hmm. not necessarily like going out with the, okay, this is who's going to pay for this. And you know, like a kind of like the plan, like, okay, yeah. so-and-so is treating and you go and you get the check and everybody either dives for it or, you know, you have that awkward moment of like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to owe you something yes. or I feel obligated now or no, I feel bad and um, I know you want to do this, but I don't believe you should because of X, Y, and Z, whether it's, you know, finances or like you're determining yeah. what you think the best thing for somebody else would be mm -hmm. and it becomes like this whole big thing, thing. and then the server standing there like holding up two credit cards like oh, which one who looks like they're gonna be bitchier if i don't take it like <laughs> you're right it's, i mean yeah. the amount of who am i who am i gonna get my ass handed to me from if i say no <laughs> right like and i think that's one of the areas that happens quite often we've gotten really used to being like you know either accepting it and not feeling worthy of accepting it and mm. feeling bad and then like kind of tallying okay next time i have to get it right because they've done this and um i actually had a situation recently where i went out with um three other people and it was um, one of my friends and i and we were with a couple who is a much younger couple. Um, I mean, the dynamic of that relationship for viewers, I think, would be like, I don't want to say a kid because they're not kids, no, but they're, they're, they're young young adults yeah. starting their lives yeah. together. and They're not as financially secure and abundant as the other people at the table, I think, is the best way of describing yes. it. Yes, and, and the age difference was, yes. was, there was much more experience with my friend and I, mm -hmm. um, in adulting, <laughs> right. I guess, and, and, and there's just... a little bit of that dynamic in the relationship. Yes. In that there is a there is a um, like familial kind yes. of like wanting to take care of them kind of feeling that's been around for the duration of those relationships. Very much so. Yeah. Like there's somebody that I kind of look at like my little brother, mm -hmm. like that kind of feeling yeah. to it. 
So we went out for lunch and it wasn't like an extravagant lunch or anything. And um, our friends pulled out their credit card immediately and was like, I've got this. And my friend and I paused and we looked at each other. Now both of us have been doing the universal needs work. So it was a much different situation than where I normally would be. I kind of stepped back because I was like, okay, if he wants to pay, like I'm already kind of processing things like yeah. I'll receive it. I don't necessarily feel super duper comfortable, but like that's a really nice gesture. Like I know mm-hmm. what you're going through right now and the fact that you've decided that you want to take these funds and treat us with them. Like I, I took that as like a, uh, that's yeah. really that nice. That's really good, yeah. And um, I took a pause and I looked at my friend and she looked at me and we both kind of took a deep breath because it was hard for us to accept the fact, okay, we're going to allow well, this to And in happen. that dynamic, <laughs> there's this kind of automatic generosity for you towards them, like mm-hmm. from, from you towards that that's been present. Like that's yes. been more the dynamic that's been there before. Yes, because we want them to, you know, like let's help you out. Right. And we want... You're getting started and like we can afford this easier than you can and yeah exactly and my friend stopped for a moment and she was like and she looked at them and she's like if this is what you'd really like to do like if this would feel good for you then we will gladly will gladly receive it and it was like it was a feel good moment for me because she's a client yeah (laughs) she's also a friend so it was really nice to be I mean I'm used to that with Claire yeah but to have another friend where I'm like Oh, like mm. it, it felt even better because there wasn't it wasn't like just me accepting it and then you know somebody else kind of fighting to receive it was right. like and you could see uh the couple light up like yeah oh my god they're treating us like adults yes and also they're also allowing us to be generous like these mm-hmm. are people who've been very generous to us over the years and we want to be generous mm-hmm. too and i think that's sometimes oh hello sound screen um <laughs> Uh, that um, I think that's sometimes a lot of the thing that we forget in this, which is that when if we were trying to give something generously to somebody else and they rejected it or wouldn't receive it, that doesn't feel great for us. Mm-hmm. And so the same is true the other way around. Like if if someone wants to be generous towards us and we block them from doing that, actually it can compromise their needs. Mm-hmm. One of the needs that exists in the branch of the tree is about being generous to other people. Um, and so, um, so the question is like, how do we start to shift this? Because um, it's it's a it's a journey. And as somebody mm-hmm. who really really struggled to receive for a very very mm-hmm. long time, it took some time and it took some real kind of effort and practice um, for me to do this. First thing is, is that is whenever you notice somebody gen- like trying to give something to you, first word thank you. Like the the word thank you, there is a there is an acknowledgement of receipt in that word. Like the fact that you are thanking them for something. The other thing to do is in those moments is when you notice that is to allow yourself to feel yourself receiving it. Like make a conscious decision. This is something that somebody else wants to do for me and I want to let that in. And that like, you can almost like imagine like visualizing like almost this, this kind of little door opening up to your heart and allowing it in and allowing yourself to feel how it feels to receive something from somebody else because they wanted to give it to you. Um, I think the other thing that's also can be really helpful to help uh, with this is, as I said, because we know the value need is one of the things that's really up at this uh, when these dynamics show up is to one pay attention to your value need and give that some love and attention. The other thing to do is to start practicing with receiving from yourself. So you can, this can take many forms, but one of the best ways that I give clients to do with this is to look at yourself in the mirror and pay yourself compliments. Like actually acknowledge the things about yourself that you want to acknowledge, that you think are great, that you think are beautiful, that you think are kind, that you think are amazing, like all of those things. And you, the, the reason I suggest doing it in a mirror is because you get to see it. You get to send it out and you actually get to like see it coming back to you. And the same thing, like imagine that like kind of little door opening and allow yourself like, Feel how it feels to receive that compliment from yourself. The interesting thing is, is that one of the ways in which we learn how to receive is learning to receive the meeting of our needs for ourselves. So when we're doing something like taking a sip of, normally it's water, it's actually kombucha right now. 
allow ourselves to receive that. Like I'm receiving that. I'm I'm gifting myself the gift of meeting one of my needs. Taking a moment to receive that. Whether it's taking a moment to rest, whether it's doing something that you love, whether it's sending a moment to uh, taking a moment to connect with somebody, whatever it is, when you are in the practice of meeting your needs, recognize in that moment that you're do- giving yourself a gift when you do this. And take just a moment, it only take, needs to take a moment to allow yourself to receive that. One of the ways that is really um, helpful when you're learning to receive is to use the inhale as like a, like a physical metaphor for like re- literally receiving in. Like when you inhale, you are receiving air into your body. And what you can do is you can connect that with the emotional feeling or with the energetic feeling. And you can actually, when you're like, like, when somebody does something generous, you can take a moment and be like, like breathe that in, allow yourself to receive that and then acknowledge it, then thank. And you can do the same thing with yourself. If you're like giving yourself compliments, you can thank yourself. You're like, I can receive that. Thank you. Like, and you can get into that practice of doing it. Because the other thing is though, as I said, we are taught to look for the things that are less than. We're taught to the things that are going to erode our self-worth and erode our value need so when we are looking in the mirror we are looking for the things that are beautiful and I don't mean physically beautiful I mean the things that make us a beautiful human being and we can start to pay attention to those things we can start to retrain ourselves to be looking for the things that are that support our value need rather than looking for things that compromise it in learning to meet my own needs throughout the journey. I remember the first time Claire said, oh, smile at yourself in the mirror. I'm like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not the first time I've heard that. Uh-huh. Won't be the last. <laughs> Show yourself a compliment in the mirror. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll get to that yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> and at first it was ridiculous. And it, it felt it ridiculous. Felt, well, yeah, I was yes. getting there. Yeah. It felt ridiculous and it felt awkward and I felt stupid as all fuck. Like looking at myself cheesing in the mirror, I'm like, I'm silly. And, I'm like, <laughs> and, and after a while, it became not cheesy and not stupid. And not, I mean, and it was fulfilling and it became more of a regular thing. And now I can look in the mirror and be like, you have got this. And yeah. I fucking believe it right? because <laughs> I know it to be true. And it's like, it took the practice and now I can receive compliments because I'm used to receiving them from myself. Yeah. And it made that less awkward because yeah, we aren't conditioned in this society to accept and receive in a way that's really fulfilling and nourishing for mm-hmm. ourselves. We always have to be like, oh, what are the strings? What's the quid pro yeah. pro? What, what's, you know, what, what do they want from me? Like there always feels like there's something loaded. And and, I, and it's important to say, I'm like, that's, you raise a really important point. And there are people who are doing this for that reason. Mm-hmm. You can normally feel that. You can normally sense. If somebody is like trying to give something to you because they want something in return, it's okay in that situation to say no thank you. Mm-hmm. That's okay if that is the reason. Because I will I will set boundary. I mean, Serena's seen me do it with people where it's like, someone's like, I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. Like, no thanks. Because um, they're trying to do something to try to elicit something from you in return. And so they're trying to utilize you as a means for getting their own needs met. That's a that's an okay dynamic to be like, yeah, I don't want to engage with that. That's not going to be um, supportive for me and that's not going to support my needs. And there are a lot of, what happens is that we then translate that approach to every mm-hmm. situation. So we want to discern. So for example, like when I'm with Serena, if Serena pays me a compliment, I'm not sitting there going, yeah, what do you want? Like, <laughs> okay, I hear you, but what's the catch? Mm-hmm. Like, waiting for the other shit. Like, I trust her. And this is part of the reason it's good to start doing this with yourself because you're not doing it for any other reason mm-hmm. than to do it because you want to support yourself and you're wanting to cultivate that value need. And then you can start to do it with the other people who are closest mm-hmm. to you and you can build that trust with them. And then there are people where, I mean, I've, uh, I've, I don't know whether I've ever shared this story on the podcast, uh, but I remember um, my very first time in a gay club in London. Um, I was there with a, I was actually celebrating a friend's birthday who was part of the LGBTQ plus, uh, I, I, IA plus community. And we went to the, I uh, went to the bar first and then we went on to the club. And 
there was a bit of a distance between the two, but <laughs> reality was the people we were with didn't know where they were going. So we got lost in London, in the rain, trying to get from the bar to the club. Um, and as we... Well, I was picturing a bar in a club. I'm like, how did you lose no. the club there if was you were at the a bar. bar? You were at a bar there going was, to there was, a club. And there was part of the same group. So it was a, it was a, the G-A-Y bar and the G-A-Y club were okay. different. So we were trying to get from one to the other. Sorry, thank you for... <laughs> was like, that wasn't necessarily clear. Um, so we got what, wet and like rained on and what have you. And I remember I walked into this um, club and not unusually... There were mirrored walls everywhere. Um, and as I walk in, I'm like, I'm like in this, I'm like doing this in the in the mirror, like checking my hair and trying to get myself looking not, not like a drowned rat. Um, because I have that kind of hair that I'm like, mm, the second it gets wet. Um, and this guy who I'd never seen before in my life, and I'd never I never saw again since, just walked up to me and went, Honey, you look absolutely fabulous, and walked off. And I was like, I love this place. I want to move in. Because it, it was somebody who was, ju he just wanted to pay me a compliment for no other reason than he wanted to pay me a compliment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time now, like I, if I'm out and about and somebody pays me a compliment, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I will keep going. I'm not, thank you. And I'm stopping to mm -hmm. find out what the, the quid pro quo is. Yeah. Or um, thank you, give me more. Yes, exactly. <laughs> thank you and carry on going. Uh, and in the same way as I'm very generous with complimenting mm -hmm. people and um, like I'm very good at noticing like jewelry and things it's, like that. Me too. Yes. Like, <laughs> oh my God, I love your earrings or, or what have you. Like it just something that it, like, I, and because I don't need anything from anybody else, I just want to be generous. And I want to gift that moment of, of something a little nice mm -hmm. to somebody, whether they're having a good day, a bad day, an indifferent day, I just want to give that little gift to them. And if they don't want to receive it, that's okay. Like I'm not attached to them receiving it either. That's the other thing is that when you get to this place, you don't need somebody else to receive it because you're not giving it so you feel good. Mm -hmm. You're not giving it to try to meet your needs to feel good about yourself by being generous to somebody else. You get to give the compliment, you get to give the comment, and if someone receives it, great. And if they don't receive it, great. Like I will often like, offer to pay something. If somebody doesn't want to receive it, cool. Okay. No big deal. Got more money in my bank account. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'll maybe treat myself later. I'll treat somebody else. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's a lot of this. And I think that it really does help to get into this habit of acknowledging and recognizing where there may be that oh someone's trying to and I, and I can feel it the second mm -hmm. someone's trying to use me to meet their needs I'm not playing that game mm -hmm. very 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 rarely will I engage if somebody's fishing for that uh that uh rubber glue compliment thing mm -hmm. I'm like I <laughs> I'll take a compliment and be like Thank you. Well, and, it's, away. and it's interesting because <laughs> I spend a lot of time with performers in this town and there are those times where they are fishing oh hard. They've got the nets out. They've got the, the, the fishing rod. They have an entire crew behind them. Absolutely. Them. It's like, it's like, um, and, and the reality is, is that I can feel where it's coming from in them. And it's not going to be genuine because it's being fished for. Like you're mm -hmm. trying to get, and that's the thing. Even if that, you want to give the compliment, it's like, oh my God, they were amazing. It's like. Oh, you're almost so, not in a space to... Well, and the thing about it, so what I'll do is in that moment, I won't give it in that moment. I will wait and I will give it from a place where it feels clean, where I'm not no, no longer trying to get it from me. The second you're trying to get it from me, and that's the thing is that where we were talking earlier about that low self-worth, trying to get stuff from everybody else, because you're trying to get it from them and you're instigating it, you don't trust it when it comes anyway because you believe it's because you've, like subconsciously, it may not be a conscious thing, but subconsciously you know, I engineered that. <laughs> like I didn't get that because they just wanted to give it to me. I got it because I pushed the right buttons to get them to say the thing I wanted them to say to try to make me feel good about myself, which I now don't because they only said it because I got them to say it. Um, and so often, I mean, and I've been in that situation multiple times where someone is desperately trying to get me to say something and I'm, and I won't say it because it's not genuine. And I know I don't want to feed that dynamic. I'm not going to be mean. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to be like, screw you, you were shit. Like I don't do that, but I will, but I won't, I won't engage with that dynamic. And then if that is something I genuinely feel and I want to say, then I will find a way of doing it cleanly at another time so that I can do it cleanly 
What they do with that, that's down to them. But I can do it in a way that feels genuine and honest. Um, anything you want to add to our learning to receive episode? I mean, we're sure we'll talk about this again on, on other occasions. And th- I mean, this shows up in so many different ways of life in terms of the the uh, like gift giving and those sorts of things. I mean, it's funny because we, um, we are, it's a, as you can see, we have the Christmas decorations up behind us. Um, and one of my favorite uh, episodes of um, the Big Bang Theory is the one where um, Penny gets um, Christmas gifts for um, Sheldon and Leonard. And Sheldon panics. He's like, you haven't given me a gift. You've given me an obligation. I have to now go out and find a gift of commensurate value and that values our relationship the same way. Because it's that trading mm-hmm. thing. It's not like this is just something that's generous that I can receive. I have to just go out. And the funny thing is, is that he goes out and he, he, he has this strategy where he goes out and he buys a bunch of different gift baskets from this kind of like toiletry, like um, body lotions and that kind of stuff and candles and um, <laughs> What happens is, is that he, he has this strategy that he's going to open her present. He's going to feign digestive distress and go up to his bedroom, look up the value of whatever she's given him and then give him, give her whatever basket is the right one in terms of commensurate value and then return all the others for his money back. So they go, they go to the, um, the point where they open the, the gifts up and he's a massive Leonard Nimoy fan and he, she, then a Nimoy came into the restaurant where she worked and she got him to sign a napkin and he also wiped his mouth with it. So he's got like Lennon Nimoy's DNA. And it's like, this is like priceless. Like you can't buy this. There is no value a- attached to it. And so he goes in there and he like comes back and he's got all of these gift baskets and he's trying and she, she's like, what did you do? And he's like, I know it's not enough, is it? Like, cause he's trying to find that way of balancing it out and the reality. And so he ends up giving her a hug cause he doesn't do hugs. And he, she's like, oh, Sheldon's hugging me. But it's that... It's that thing, and it's like I remember, like we, I was actually just saying as we started this episode, I'm really excited about Serena's um, Christmas gift, not because it's expensive, not because because I think it's something that she will enjoy and will appreciate. It's a little bit like I think we shared on the uh, we might have shared on a previous podcast about the the folded chips. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, I thanked Serena. Like we both love folded chips crisps if you're in the UK um and uh, as a way of thanking her I did she, she said oh she said like something about I said thank you so much I was so grateful and she said oh enough to give me a folded chip and I said you can have all my folded chips today that's how grateful I am so I went out and bought a bag of chips and took all the folded ones and put them in a ziplock to give them to her because that's something that it shows I know her it shows time and effort and thought that's got into it and I, I know appreciated that. that more than I would have like a fancy dinner out. Like exactly, fuck you gave me your folded chips. That's love. <laughs> That's like, a big deal, right? I mean, and I've I've struggled previously with the whole gift thing. I, I I've never been a well. In recent years, I've realized the accumulation of stuff, and yeah. <laughs> not everybody wants stuff, and I don't necessarily always want stuff, and you know, like mm-hmm. the stuff tends to consume us and control us, and it's like I don't want to buy something just to buy something. So right. I'll go on a trip or the holidays, especially around the holidays. It's like there is this kind of niggling obligation Mm -hmm. that it's oh I have to buy presents for everybody I have to do this and it's like yeah all right well I can go and buy them something but if it doesn't resonate with me or with them like why am I just buying more stuff to say that I bought it to get a cookie that doesn't even feel good because I don't really want to buy this like yeah and it's interesting this kind of spiral circle whatever it is that we get ourselves into Mm -hmm. and it's like now that I can receive, it's like, oh, I know what things feel good. And I know it doesn't take those grand gestures all the time. And those are yeah. great, but right. that's not necessarily what it's about. And the more that you're able to receive, the better you feel about what you're giving too. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like you give, like if you're fulfilled, um, if your value need is being met for yourself and you're fulfilling yourself, it's like, yeah, like Claire said, I want to give from this abundance and I want to do it when it feels clean when it feels appropriate when it resonates with me not Mm. because I feel like there's obligation not because you gave me a hundred dollars in gifts and I really thought about this but it's only twenty dollars right I'm never going to use this ping pong set you gave me 
thank you. Well, it's, and- it's funny you say that because I remember a, a girlfriend of mine, I gave I gave uh, gifts to, and we're not close anymore, but um, uh, many, many years ago. And I remember it was around Christmas time and I went um, and I, I'm, as you can see from behind us, I enjoy crystals. Um, just a bit. Just a little bit. Um, and a lot of the time you can get um, geodes that match up um, and it's a sign of friendship. You Like you have one and they have one. And um, that was what I got her for the Christmas gift because it was something that meant something to me. It meant something to her. It meant something for our relationship. And it was funny because she was talking to me about somebody else and she was like, can you believe they got me this and it was only this amount of money? And I was like, that's more than I spent on you. But because you didn't know, she assumed how much I'd spent. Mm -hmm. But for me, the meaning of the gift, like having a gift that was meaningful was way more important for, for me than spending a huge amount of money. I like I, I like to buy things that people will enjoy mm-hmm. and I like to receive those as well. It's receiving things that show that you know somebody, that you've listened, that you've paid mm-hmm. attention, that you've remembered, that you care about those things. Those are the things that are really, um, and when you receive that, you're not receiving a check. You're not receiving a wad of cash. You're receiving the love and appreciation and connection from this other person. And that feels so much better to receive. And it also feels so much better to give. Like I I said, Serena, like, I can't wait to give her a Christmas gift. It's ridiculous. Anybody else would look at me and go, what the fuck are you doing? Um, But we know I'm easily entertained. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, And there are lots of things where, like, I've, I've done those sort of small things to Serena. And she's like, aww. Like, I love this. And most people would be like... What? what I mean <laughs> why uh mm, yeah because I don't need something to cost a thousand dollars to know that I'm val like our relationship is valuable to Claire mm. like that's that's the thing when we're yeah. when we're receiving something I think we're kind of conditioned to automatically put a value on it and right. for that to then put a value on the relationship that's present right and it's like no sometimes it's just present like well one of the best gifts that serena ever gave me was um when i was i was got stuck in the uk for covid and um i couldn't get back here i was away from the majority of my friends i was away from the place that i wanted to um spend my time and i was i was miserable about it like i was stuck i mean literally could not get out of the country um you know, and a lot of times not even out of your house. Right. I mean, I was, it was. They were locked down. <laughs> it was t- Like we were in serious lockdowns. Like you couldn't even go out and sit on a park bench with somebody because like people were getting ticketed for that. Like legitimately, it was rough. You were allowed to go out to do some exercise, but even that had to be within a certain mile radius of your home. Um, so it was, it was rough. And I remember, and we talked about this on a, um, during our grief series. Um, oh, Interestingly, I don't know where this is going to fit because we, we recorded out of sequence. So you may be hearing about this before we talk about this <laughs> in the grief series. I think it's after, actually, because I think it was episode two that we spoke about it in, um, where um, Serena sent me my own Flat Sharon. Um, and now, if you've heard the episode, Flat Sharon was Serena's, like, representation of her mum after she passed. And Flat Sharon often comes out on adventures with us. She's been in numerous bars with us and <laughs> she's on been the all water. sorts of she's places. Been all kinds of places. Um I had to lick key lime pie off her at a, a local restaurant. I she mean she had to. <laughs> yes. I was I was told it was it was compulsory because Joe wasn't there and apparently that's normally his job. Um <laughs> That was the conversation, right? It was the conversation, but we're just going to drop that nugget and let you guys think about it. Like, I realize how fucking weird that, that sounds, sounds, but anybody who knows us, and Joe, us, yeah, my relationship with I mean, my, like, it, the whole thing is silly. The whole thing is silly and ridiculous. But like, so like flat shower means a lot to me. And in the time when Serena and I couldn't be together, her sending me my own flat Sharon, which probably cost less than five bucks to make um we're talking yeah like less than a dollar probably to make yeah Yeah, i mean and it it came with a bunch of other stuff oh yes yeah there were i mean this box was full of different things that had monetary value um i mean there was a little bottle of tequila in there there was a book that 
like she'd got some of like a lot of my favorite people to sign in fact one of my closest um people here had actually drawn a picture like he's an artist had drawn a picture of me and a picture of me serena and joe in it there were all different things in there that had a monetary value and i loved all of them because it was it was this themed box that was linked to the, my 40th birthday celebration that Serena put on, which was an Alice in Wonderland party, and it was an unbirthday gift. And so, like, all of that meant something to me. But to have my own flat Sharon, I was like, I have my own flat Sharon. Like, she and I were drinking tequila in bed that night. Like, I mean, <laughs> the little bottle of tequila, we, we, yeah, we did our thing. Like, it was... Sounds about right, flat yeah, Sharon. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing, is that, that to receive that, like, from an actual dollar amount of what it was worth it was worth nothing like it like probably cost less than a dollar to put together and I got to receive the love and connection from one of my closest people knowing me thinking about me knowing the things knowing what knowing how excited I would be to have my own flat Sharon like you knew that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, she could have given a flat Sharon to a bunch of other people and they'd be like, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, and I was like, I have my own flat Sharon. It was the most exciting thing in the, that moment. Um, and that was what I was receiving. I wasn't receiving the gift. I wasn't receiving the financial value associated with it. I was receiving the love and care and thought and effort that one of my people had put into me. And that receiving that mm -hmm. feels so good and to give that feels so good as well so like it's it when you start to get to this place where you're able to receive and you're able to recognize that where the value really lies in things and the value you're really receiving versus this kind of monetary um like or, dollar amount or tangible like yeah i have a physical gift it's like you have a gift and what went into that gift the love the right. connection the you know the listening all those things that Claire had mentioned that's what makes giving and receiving really yeah. special yeah it's the I've thought I, I remembered I've I've listened I've all of those things and when you receive that so like learning to receive is a practice to begin with mm -hmm. but actually then learning to receive the real value that amplifies what it is that you're receiving and it hits multiple needs at the mm -hmm. same time because ding, ding, fucking ding. exactly it's like when you see like, a lot of people will go oh this is expensive so it's me to my value need because you value me at that monetary amount oh okay i can see I can see why people think that. Or look, I've got this thing which is of a high financial value, so it's foundation function need. Like it's I don't have to buy that for myself, kind of thing. Okay, mm I can see it. But when you actually nuance. <laughs> so uh, yeah, when you get into the nuance, so you go like, okay, I'm like my love and connection need is being met in receiving this beautiful gift that has no monetary value but has all of the thought and care and effort that's gone into it i'm also there's an acknowledgement need being met in that there's my value need being met in that and it's like ding 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 like it goes across the board in so many ways um and i think that that's this is not where we expected to go with this podcast as serena said we had two bullet points <laughs> we were on a magical mystery tour along with you all over this one but i do think that it's actually ended in a really beautiful place which is this Learning to receive is a step. There's the first step, and then learning to receive the real value is is when you get your sprinkles on your Sunday. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add in our learning to receive episode? No, I think I'm good. I I, I can see a rabbit hole to circle, but uh, we'll get back to we'll that. Follow rabbit. Yeah, we'll follow the white rabbit down. Yeah, we'll follow the white rabbit some other day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. We'll be back again soon. And remember, until then, to take care, to stay safe, and to continue to meet your own needs. Lots of love. Hi. Hi friends. That's it for today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and give us a written review as it will help more people find us. And remember, you are worthy of receiving simply because you exist. Well shit, it really is that simple.